Ah, Nietzschean nihilism. It's a fascinating topic, isn't it? Nietzsche, a profoundly influential German philosopher, had a complex relationship with nihilism. Nihilism, at its core, is the belief that life lacks objective meaning, purpose or intrinsic value. Nietzsche saw this as a, a significant challenge and a concern for the modern world. Nietzsche believed that traditional values, especially those rooted in religion and conventional morality, were losing their power in the face of scientific rationalism and scepticism. He feared that these these values, as these values eroded, people might fall into nihilism, the feeling that life is meaningless. Now, Nietzsche, he didn't endorse nihilism. Instead, he saw it as a problem to be overcome. His famous proclamation that God is dead is often misunderstood. He wasn't celebrating the death of the divine, but rather pointing out a cultural shift where the Christian moral framework was no longer a central part of European life. This, he thought, could lead to a sense of purposelessness. Nietzsche's perspective on nihilism is captured in a succinct manner in his work The Will to Power. He describes nihilism as having two distinct forms, the first of which is active nihilism. This is seen as a sign of increased power of the spirit. It represents a dynamic creative force that actively engages in the, the deconstruction of old values and the creation of new ones. It's a transformative process where one moves beyond the void left by the absence of traditional beliefs and values to establish a new set of values. Then, of course, then there's passive nihilism. This is what everybody thinks of as being bad nihilism. The form represents a decline and a recession of the power of the spirit. Passive nihilism is characterised by a sense of despair and resignation in the face of a perceived meaninglessness or valueless world. It's a state where one becomes stuck in the void created by the loss of traditional values without moving towards the creation of new ones. In other words, what's the point of living? I might as well just lie here on the sofa and wait to die type of thing. Nietzsche's quote from The Will to Power illustrates this dichotomy. Nihilism, it's ambiguous. A nihilism as a sign of increased power of the spirit as active nihilism. Nihilism as a decline and recession of the power of the spirit as passive nihilism. This distinction is crucial in understanding Nietzsche's overall approach to nihilism. While he acknowledges the challenge posed by the loss of traditional values, he also sees an opportunity for growth and transformation through the active creation of new values. To counter nihilism, Nietzsche proposed the idea of creating new values and finding meaning through personal will and self-overcoming. His concept of the Ubermensch or Overman is central here. An individual who creates their own values and purpose transcending traditional norms. Nietzsche's work is a call to individualism and self-realisation, urging people to forge their own path in a world without preordained meaning. His stance is not one of despair, but rather of empowerment and creative freedom, challenging individuals to embrace life fully, even without external and absolute sources of meaning. So the next logical question should be, how do you create your own values as proposed by Nietzsche? Now this is intriguing. It's an intriguing and personal journey. It's all about forging a path that aligns with you, your, your own unique perspective and experiences. And it can be broken down into a few different steps. One of seven, actually. The first of which is self-examination and awareness. So this begins with introspection, understanding your current beliefs, values and motivations. You must ask yourself why you hold these beliefs. Are they genuinely your own or have they been adopted from society, family or culture? Nietzsche emphasised the importance of questioning societal norms and inherited values. And this is the beginning of critical thinking and challenge. Point two. Nietzsche advocated for questioning everything, including the most deeply held beliefs. This involves critical thinking and a willingness to challenge conventions and norms. It's about asking, why do I believe this is right or wrong? And what purpose does this belief serve in my life? And once we've got past uh, stage two of critical thinking and challenge, we move on to stage three, which is self-overcoming. Nietzsche's idea of self-overcoming involves moving beyond your current limitations and beliefs. It's about continuously evolving and striving to realise your potential. And this means embracing challenges and hardships as opportunities for growth. And if done properly, this will allow us then, as per point four on the list, to participate in the creation of new values. So creating new values involves defining what is meaningful and important to you. It's a creative process where you decide what principles and ethics you want to live by based on your own understanding and experiences. This isn't about being contrarian for his own sake, but finding what resonates with your authentic self. And then once you've done this, then you can start living authentically, which is point number five on the list. It's one thing to identify your values and another to live by them. 
Nietzsche encourages living in accordance with your self-created values. This means making choices and taking actions that align with your personal ethos. And in order to do this, then, we have to embrace something known as the will to power. It's point number six, to embrace the will to power. For Nietzsche, the will to power is a fundamental drive. In creating your own values, this means striving not just for survival or basic needs, but for the achievement of your own potential and the exertion of your will in the world in a way that is meaningful to you. And then, of course, finally then, point number seven is the acceptance of life's inherent challenges. Nietzsche's concept of amor fati, or love of fate, is crucial. Embrace life with all its ups and downs, understanding that suffering and challenges are a part of the human experience, and that actually they can be catalysts for growth. So, the takeaway from, from this, like this short video is to remember that Nietzsche's philosophy is deeply personal and subjective. Creating your own values isn't about finding the right answer but about discovering what is genuinely meaningful and fulfilling for you as an individual. It's a lifelong process of exploration, reflection, and living intentionally. So you live deliberately and in accordance with your own intents. And there we are, guys. So I think we'll leave it there for, for today. It's a short introduction to Nietzsche. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe, help the channel grow, and I'll speak to you all again next time. Bye now.